if there's one thing we've ever learned in Russian history, it's that uh, Russia doesn't stop uh, when they feel like they've eaten enough of their territory on their periphery. They they keep marching until they, in Lenin's words, they, they, they march and if they hit steel, they'll turn around. If they hit Kasha, which is mush, uh, then they advance. When I was in Russia, I learned you know, very, uh, very quickly and you know, very deeply that uh, you know, the Russian people themselves are incredibly proud of their history. They are an incredibly resilient, tough people. These are, these are people who, when they, re when, they, when they crack open their history books, they are looking at a thousand years of uh, surviving invasions and dealing with uh, threats on every one of their frontiers and having uh, the, the guts and the ability to withstand some of the most severe weather conditions on the face of the planet. Uh, and these people have lived through it. Their relatives have lived through it. Their ancestors have lived through it. And they, that uh, is just imbued in the way that they look at their society. They are tough to defeat. They are one of the probably the most resilient nations on the face of the earth. They've, they've seen it before. They've seen uh, invasions. They've seen and uh, experienced the loss of 30 million people at a whack when it comes to the World War II losses. They've experienced famine and, and depressions and, and so forth. So they have this cultural DNA that allows them to think that no matter what comes their way, uh, they will not only survive it, but they will emerge on the other side uh, tougher than when they when they started. That affects a lot of our decisions because you just can't out suffer the Russians. There's no amount of pain that you're going to inflict on the Russians or the Russian people or their elected uh, or autocratic leadership that's going to change their minds if their minds are set on a, on a particular objective. Russia comes with uh, incredible strengths. It's a nation that spans 12 time zones. It's got a seat at the National Security Council. It has enough nuclear weapons to uh, eradicate our nation as a, as a functioning entity uh, and destroy the world. Uh, and it, uh, it, it brings, you know, enormous amount of capability when it comes to ground forces and the ability to threaten neighbors and regions all across the world. So it, that, that hasn't changed and won't change. Uh, they're, you know, an immense, they have immense national resources. Uh, they have enough nat natural gas and oil to pump for probably another hundred years if they, if they, if they wanted to. Uh, and they, so they, they come with some immense strengths uh, that can't be discounted. There are uh, two different perspectives. You know, we, we grew up in the United States, the shining city on the hill. Ne tomorrow is going to be brighter than today. Our descendants will be more prosperous than, than we are. Uh, life, life will get better. And uh, history is one long arrow towards uh, improvement and betterment. Uh, and that's that's the life that's the life we've lived. That's the you know our our country's path. You, you know, brighter days are ahead. Russians don't share that perspective. Uh, Russians have a very uh, uniquely pessimistic viewpoint on the future. They don't see brighter days ahead. Uh, they hope for brighter days ahead. They've got a famous saying, you know, hope for the best, expect the usual. They would like to see brighter days. They are firmly convinced that that's not Russia's destiny. They don't see, like I said, they don't see uh, things getting better. They uh, they are there to trudge through life, uh, make the best of what they have, uh, do what they can for their families. Uh, you know, try to you know try try to live this life as best as they can. But they know obstacles are against them. The weather, uh, their governments, their autocrats, uh, you know, the the forces that be in Moscow. Uh, all of the invasions, the famines, the poverty, that's that's just Russia's lot, in their opinion. They they would like to reverse that, but they're not expecting that that's going to happen. It's a very different way of living. Uh, when you have when you have that perspective, you approach uh, your your life, you approach your life decisions, uh, your you expect certain things out of your government uh, that are completely different than what we expect. Uh, you know, if we get uh, if we get our policy with Russia wrong, or we make uh, we make missteps, or we we do things through action or inaction uh, that erode our relationships with uh, key European allies. Uh, then things are going to get very difficult. Other things too is if we get this wrong with Russia and uh, we uh, send the wrong signals about 
our determination to maintain security in a key part of the world and to support our allies and partners, there's another major power out there who will take some lessons learned from that, and that's uh, China. And China uh, may make some decisions based on how we approach Russia and how we approach this crisis in Ukraine and draw some conclusions about our commitment and our ability to uh, wield our power on the world stage. Uh, having a uh, policy of taking European, Central European security seriously is incredibly important for our own national security interests and to keep the uh, keep the Russians from thinking that uh, they, they will get to tear up the rules uh, that we've established over the last seven decades when it comes to the security apparatus that, that keeps countries in Europe from tearing each other's throats out.